Let me know when you you start and record. Yeah. I got my questions on my phone, so. Can't even use paper and pencil anymore, huh? Can, but sometimes. This right. is exactly, exactly what it's all going to, man. This, <laughs> it's really what this is all about, too. Yeah. Not you know, making everything a robot or technology. Like, all right, sorry, man. Go ahead. It starts as novel and fun. They make it fun for you. And then soon enough, it creeps over your life. That's my biggest concern with all of technology is that it's fun for a little bit and then it's no longer fun. And then you won't have a choice. Everywhere we go, we are being tracked and monitored. And as technology evolves, it may seem like surveillance culture is unavoidable. For Brute, I'm meeting up with three people who are using fashion and art to disrupt surveillance. People call me Skitch and I'm an eyeglasses maker who also cares about privacy, so I combined the two. I've always just been uh, private and I, I've never liked uh, being on camera, even when I was a kid. Reflecticals work on two concepts. It's, one is um, an infrared absorbing lens, and then the other concept is a reflective element that is applied to the frame. The camera doesn't really know how to process that information and it can make uh, your face, you know, exposed with a bright light that you're sending back to its original source, which is the camera. Yeah, the, the manufacturer actually, I don't like the design on this one, so I actually have to bend it around a little bit. You can tell them a million times how to do it, it still doesn't get done right. I focused all my energy on learning about the, the technologies of uh, facial recognition and how I could defeat them with a simple pair of glasses. And I'm always trying to be one step ahead of them because it's going to come. You know, technology is not stopping. It's on a roll. So I'm ready to go. Surveillance is no longer about criminal. It's about making money. So it's not that you don't have anything to hide anymore. It's, do you want to be a product? I, I think it basically takes away a, a, a sense of our humanity. So all I'm trying to do with, you know, privacy eyeglasses, it's just an option to say, I don't want to participate in, you know, being tracked and monitored everywhere I go. After meeting with Skitch, I came to Providence, Rhode Island to meet with Leo Salvaggio, who instead of protecting his identity, decided to sacrifice him. So tell me about this mask. Well, this mask is my face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's my face. I created it as a way to thwart facial recognition systems. When someone goes out into public and they put on this mask, surveillance cameras will essentially attribute all of their actions as my own. While at the same time, anyone who is performing my identity in public as, you know, a Leo, if you will, creates disinformation and feeds it back into the system. And that's just one way that I'm thinking about how we can resist surveillance culture. I created Your Me Surveillance because I'm really concerned about what surveillance culture will do to what it means to be human. When we are watched or observed, we alter our behavior. The reality is, is that we're always constantly watched and observed. I remember being like a kid and like, if I knew my mom was watching me, like I was just like a much better kid. Right? I was like a much, much better kid than when I was alone. Like, <laughs> and like now, like literally Big Brother is watching us all the time. Who are we gonna be when, when we're constantly on guard and being measured to a value system that we didn't sign up for? Join me, you are me. 
I started with a white male face because that is my face. If you want to be invisible to surveillance, just be a white man in a suit. The sad reality is we don't live right now in a country where, where you could say the same about other faces, right? So there's this concept called surveillance, which is using surveillance technology against the surveillers or against the party in power. I wanted to create a project that encouraged people to record video when they're going to protests or other actions so that they had a way of defending themselves in court should they be arrested or should someone that they were recording be arrested. So I found some flip flops and it's just about figuring out the right size I want. What it is, is it's an online archive of DIY tutorial design for body cameras that can be made out of household materials or things that you can source from the dollar store. Do not be concerned about surveillance, especially in this day and age, in the time of George Floyd and all of these black indigenous people of color who have been murdered by the police is, is to also not empathize with an entire community who is prey to this kind of culture. With the body cam project, I am very inspired by the materials that I find. To keep it from coming up, so I'm going to try. <sighs> There's a huge part of me that like, just wants to try stupid things to try stupid things. Like why not take <laughs> two steering wheel covers and, and a flip flop and see what you could do with it. I think my balance is about showing people what something that's functional could be and then the more spectacly kind of like fun, weird, crazy things are all about like opening your mind to what could be. I'm actually shocked that that worked. <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't do all of the other things that I did to the other one, but like, I mean, you know, with all of the straps and the security stuff like, it might actually be better. That's not what was supposed to happen. Hopefully I can get this in correctly and I don't pop a staple. There we go. All right, so I've got that there. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. There's something to be said for a kind of humor that feeds into something that is way more serious than it might look to be. Hey everyone, I'm here in Providence and we're going to be participating in the uh, protest. So uh, I'm going to put this hands-free on top of my head and hopefully you'll be able to see it if you're not able to participate here. Okay, cool. All right, so. George Floyd! George I think that my work ends up asking more questions than it provides answers. I don't think that any of my projects offer a kind of panacea of sorts. I think what they offer is one take, one perspective on what you could do. Hopeful disruptor. Uh, that's what I like to think of myself as a hopeful disruptor. I drove out to the Columbia River Gorge in Washington to meet with Kate Bertash, who created a fashion line that floods license plate readers with fake data. It's been fun also to see the resurgence of sort of like hacker fashion. Uh, you know, we're all living in a very dystopian time and cyberpunk is kind of a resurging both as like a sort of fashion influence in the world. And it's kind of nice then to sort of have a place in that conversation and say that, you know, some of the ideas that we take from these like images of the world gone wrong can actually be used to bring a little bit of fun to like the everyday world right now. This is a live demo test using a mobile phone version of a mobile license plate reader meant to be used by 
um, maybe like a business owner or a like landlord or somebody. And uh, it actually does use the same systems that uh, some of these commercial systems sold to police actually use. Um, you can see the different boxes that are lighting up across all of the different parts of the shirt where it thinks it detects various license plates. And uh, this is one of my favorite bits is like the Fourth Amendment plate design really, really goes wild <laughs> on some of these systems. You can see like the captured screen, the number of plates is counting. So yeah, it was really important to me that these things also work not just hypothetically, but live. I think something that people don't realize about license plate readers is like, you know, you might see one on a police car or at a stop sign, but unfortunately uh, they are always reading all the time and they can ingest thousands of plates a minute. They create a very detailed map of your day. Hopefully by showing that uh, they could be affected by something as simple as like a piece of clothing that we kind of question sort of the places these systems have in our society. These systems are not that smart and they don't work most of the time. And even if they did, we should ask very important questions about, you know, like, should this be something we have to accept in the world? I was living in Los Angeles up until very recently. And Los Angeles is one of the surveillance capitals of the country. We imagine that people have different values between like oh, city people versus like rural country folk. But like, I think all of us together have an intuitive sense of the fact that we have the right to privacy. And I think that that's something that um, I think can really, really, if we let it like bring us all together. The future of facial recognition, I think is gonna be a battle. And honestly, I'm not very optimistic with uh, people's rights to privacy. I think, I think it'll continue to erode. So right now, I believe our, our best option, you know, I'm trying to fight the system. One of the things that, that kind of comes up also through these art projects is that, yes, I'm showing mistakes in these systems, but they should also invite us to ask questions about like, would this be right for me to use it, even if it worked perfectly all of the time? And in my opinion, the answer is no. When you look at the resources of myself compared to like the government, I'm not going to win. But if I can make their job a little bit harder, a little bit more annoying, I'm here for it.